Tuesday, 30th of December, nearing the end of the year. It's been snowing the past three days, which has been a distraction from doing stuff in the building site. As you had to shovel stuff away and also, well, can't really get to build your suppliers. Well, they're all closed till the 7th of January. So, uh, yeah, it's a month to go before we want to move in. Uh, we still don't have a toilet, but yeah, maybe in two weeks we will. But we've already started moving in. So, uh, the old reliable Billy bookshelves from Ikea that we've had for some years and they're getting populated. And, uh, yeah, but if you look around the rest of the place, it's still, it's still looking like a building site. Uh, a few more, the um, skirting boards that I made, but I need to do another batch, but it's not so fun doing that at the barn, it's so cold. But anyway, things are going pretty good. But uh, just one, one thing that we've decided to do that uh, we're probably crazy. Um, so in this, this bedroom here, I actually got this to a stage where it's uh, pretty much ready to paint. So the walls were, were uh, had a skim coat, a bit of a sanding and whatever. And um, yeah, it's looking quite okay. But there was a hole in the ceiling here. So originally there was a wall uh, against this beam and uh which meant that the ceiling was uh had holes in it so i yesterday cut this strip out so we can basically pop up a sheet of plasterboard and then um yeah basically plaster over that and uh do a skim coat on the rest of the ceiling because the rest of the ceiling is uh it's hard to see here but this is um reed mats and then there's a layer of plaster underneath but there are cracks running everywhere so uh between this beam and this beam like there's nothing just this uh reed mat and then there's a crack running uh, across the, the ceiling there and this is the same between every between every beam so the options were to like i said either fill this up and um do a skim coat with a uh, webbing in it so reinforcement mesh to get rid of and hide the cracks or take it all down and um, expose those beams, clean them, and then do uh, plaster in between the beams like in all the other rooms. And yesterday I spoke to a plastering friend of ours and um, arranged for him to come in a week to do the plastering in between because I just don't want to do ceilings. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take this ceiling down on both sides of this beam and... Um, yeah, probably stupid. A month to go, but I kind of thought it'll look nicer. And the other thing is, this room is really low, so uh, my head basically touches the bottom of that beam there when I'm standing. And I'm small, and um, if we win, you know, three, four centimeters in height in the the rest of the room, that's an advantage, I guess. Plus, I just think it looks nicer. So yeah, we're going to start that now. Get the tools out, and uh, I'm gonna make a maybe video later on of halfway through. I'm using my phone, so the quality may not be as good. But I'm not bringing my camera into this dusty atmosphere. It's gonna be pretty hellish, um, because up above there's a there's a bit of space there. And uh, when I cut down this section yesterday, well, here's a either a wasps or a bees nest was here long, long ago. And of course, the, the usual mouse nest. So uh, there's lots of little bedding falling down. No skeletons yet. We have plenty of skeletons under this floor when I lifted it. So uh, maybe this hidden treasure, <laughs> finally. Uh, that's why we're ripping everything out. We're just hoping there's treasure somewhere. So yeah, I'll get on with it. And uh, maybe we'll have a, a cut too later on uh, when the ceiling is down and the place is filled with rubble. So a quick uh, look, 45 minutes later. Um, yeah, a bit dusty here, all right. And now, uh, excuse the voice, I've got a mask on. At least my hangover is uh, reducing, but here we go. One half of it is done. Uh, take it down. And uh, actually, getting the plaster off is quite easy. Getting the reed mats down, they're pretty resistant, actually, so they're stapled to those beams. And uh, what's cool here. I expected it to be all like this, so just the raw oak battens between, but actually 
obviously in the past they had been uh, plastered so this is actually clay plaster uh, directly on the wood and then it's uh, yeah kind of like a lime wash I guess uh, whitewash and so most of the rooms had this kind of thing and then the barns and stuff so up here was originally for grain storage uh, and definitely above uh, this level and then amongst all the rubble you can see this here and this here and this here that's all uh mouse nests that are up above the ceiling no skelly still and no gold so yeah we'll work on and uh my better half is here now so uh we'll tackle it together and uh put all this stuff into buckets and decide where we're going to dispose of it so we'll come back in a moment and uh yeah we we'll start uh, cleaning the wood so it's exactly four hours since uh we began at just after 11 this morning and uh okay so all the first ceiling is down so what i realize now is actually we're taking two ceilings down the first being the the one from i don't know i'm guessing the 50s uh, with the straw mats and all that and then uh, on this side of the beam uh, the original ceiling was much better preserved but these little stalactites are from the uh, from the 1950s ceiling when they were splashing up the plaster but underneath that end like before it's um, it's lime based stuff layers of lime and um, on top of a light clay plaster very fine but yeah, it's kind of small bits of straw let's say in it uh, to stop it cracking but it's all falling down anyway so yeah this has to also come down um because what we're going to do is a more modern uh, version of the of the uh, reed mats with um expanded metal sheeting i think it's called in english streckmetall in german and uh, we'll tack that up to the uh, those battens and then plaster in between so uh, it'll carry and won't crack but so the detail, what's taking so long actually is uh, all the little staples have to come out. You can see the little stubs of them still there. So pulling them out one by one with the pliers and uh, yeah, so that there's no metal sitting in it. And then yeah, it'll be just much better when we're sanding it later on. And then other small details like, of course, the walls here are 10 centimetres thicker than they used to be because it's insulated from the inside. So, of course, the ends of those straw mats are sticky in there, so they all have to be pulled out and uh, something done with that. So lots of details still to do, but uh, yeah, it's going okay. Um, time to get something to eat now, though. So it's about time we did a bit of sanding or cleaning off of the wood. And the idea here would be not to remove too much material, uh, but basically just to clean it down. And two ways I can do this. My old favourite tool, which I've used a lot, many hours spent together. Uh, I think the are the only ones that do this type of thing, uh, that I know of. Uh, it was dear, <laughs> but worth it because we've done so much with it. Uh, so this is a, a brush sander uh, that has an 80 grit wheel, so this is obviously swappable and um it's quite gentle on the wood so it's a uh, nylon uh, brushes not metal so it doesn't really mess up the grain or anything like that uh, cleans things up nicely can be a bit awkward in small spaces and it's incredibly loud uh, but really powerful but if that isn't enough to and i think it should be enough to clean these off it's only been clay and stuff on them so uh there's no paint or anything but if it gets really stubborn uh, like the ones in the living room where it had layers and layers of paint uh, then the angle grinder with the uh, with the standing disc attached will do the job. So, time to plug them in and get the mask on, and maybe the earplugs too. Let's see what it looks like after. A little while later, well, quite a while later, we had a visitor and uh, collected a trailer so that all the uh, rubble could be taken away. So, all done. Um, what you see there is uh, actually stuff from sanding uh, with the... Uh, brush sander and uh, so basically the flat surfaces of the beams have all been done with that and then uh, the sides of the beams I did with the angle grinder and the sanding attachment but yeah back breaking it's a quite a heavy tool when you're pushing it up because you have to push uh, it's yeah I'm gonna feel it later on but uh, not bad I think I'm quite happy now the challenge today was to get everything down and uh, get the wood to a state where it's ready to be oiled 
Uh, but of course, you won't do that until after the plastering is done. So uh, I'm quite pleased with the work done today so far. And uh, yeah, feels like we've taken a step backwards, perhaps. But uh, yeah, it's okay. Maybe just a quick look at. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm in frame even. But give you an idea of the kind of dirt that's falling down the whole time. So yeah, doesn't really fit with the beard either. So there we are. Uh, I'm gonna just sweep up a bit and then uh, go and have a cup of coffee and something to eat and uh, think about what I'm gonna do next. Mm. Anyway, we'll have a look uh, in a later video, perhaps then at uh, what this looks like uh, when things are really cleaned up a bit. We have to wipe down the beams and, uh, and hopefully get some material to prepare it for the plastering. Job done. <laughs>